What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about the money beliefs that I dropped to double my money. Let's get into it. There's a lot of beliefs that we're pre-exposed to just throughout our life, especially throughout childhood and stuff. And there's plenty of those that translate to our adult life. And I just want to share mine with you today. You probably share this in common with me. I used to have this belief about money. We're going straight into number one. You only need one stream of income which is typically a job, right? I used to really believe that, you know, you go to school, you get a good job, boom, get a decent salary, you get married, you grow up, you get a house, picket fence, kids, all the whole nine, right? But the thing is, you really can't be out here doing what your parents did and be as successful or as well off as they are. Times are completely different and money is way inflated. One stream of income, is not going to cut it anymore based off of what I've seen and based off of what I've experienced in life. Even if you are good and resourceful with money, even if you do make a lot of money, if that one income stream gets cut, you ain't going to be having nothing coming in. So it's always good to have a security net of a little bit of money coming in from multiple places. And that's a mindset that I got early on just as I got out on my own and just really experienced the real world for myself. I was like, man, this is a little different than it was when I was with my parents. It's a little different than life was when I was in college and it was cozy and I got to hang out with friends and stay up all night and go to class and eat whatever I wanted to in the dining halls. Like stuff is just different. It's a lot more uncomfortable. And I saw firsthand how unstable my first job was in terms of just how people were treated and just how it depended on the flavor of the month, the flavor of the day, you know, how the boss was feeling. You sneezed the wrong way, you know what I'm saying? You might get let go. It was just like, it was just a weird time and it didn't feel very stable or consistent. The only thing that was consistent was you didn't really know what you were getting yourself into that day. So I just, I didn't feel very secure financially, just even though I was making good money, just like I was saying, and even though I was pretty resourceful with money, I just didn't feel secure. I felt like at any given time, if my job was stripped away from me, I wouldn't have nothing to show for it. I was just getting started out. I was going hard on my debt. Like it was just, it was a weird time. So I learned firsthand that one stream of income is not enough. I wasn't really able to get a great night's sleep like I am now. I'm not saying you have to create a business, like a multi-billion dollar business or anything like that. I'm just saying you should strive to have other streams of income. Everybody that I've ever met in life has been multi-talented. They've been really good at something and you can definitely monetize your talents. You can grow from that. Even the most simplest of things, people do it all the time. So I just encourage people to have more than one stream of income. The whole dream of going to school, getting a good job, that's great. And I still think people should do that. Even if it's not going to college, I do think you should further your education in some way, even if it's on a self-educated level and get a certification or something and just really strive to get the highest paying job you can get while working the least amount of hours you can possibly work. That's my formula for success at least because I don't wanna be living where I work just to say that I make good money. But that would be what I think everybody should do. Don't just rely on one stream of income. I feel like that's kind of a dangerous thing to do, especially in today's time. The biggest companies in the world like Microsoft and Google are laying people off massively. I mean, you really have to consider that. Second money belief that I dropped to double my money is kind of interesting because I'm an advocate for this now, but I used to be like, nah, stay away from this. I used to really believe that investing was too risky. And instead I thought that I could just save my way into wealth and into riches because I've always had high ambition with where I wanted my money level to go, what I wanted to be able to do and you know, travel and all these things but my method of getting there was completely contradictory to where i wanted to go i'm like well i'm just gonna save a bunch of money out of every paycheck and like money doesn't compound that way you can't compound money that gives you like a point oh 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 i'm exaggerating a little bit but, but you get a really small interest rate when you put money into the bank and that's all i was doing it was just going straight into savings saving savings i just thought that i could just save my way into wealth and i had to have someone that I really look up to that ended up becoming my mentor to sit me down and actually say, hey man, you know you're not gonna save your way into wealth, right? You could have 50K in the bank. What's that gonna get you? How long is that gonna last you? How long is that gonna take care of your family? It's not, so you really need to reconsider what you're gonna do. The way that wealthy people do it is they invest their money, either in a business that they're running themselves or 
businesses that perform highly, like in the stock market. Think about your 401k. You're just passively investing, but that money is growing at a rapid rate compared to if you just kept it at the bank. And that conversation just changed my perspective on money. And the, and the crazy thing is, I knew this in the back of my head because in college, was one of the last classes I had to take was a class that taught us all about the impact of compound interest. And I know that's a super boring term, but bear with me for a second here. We used to learn about that stuff and they taught us a little bit about the stock market. They didn't so much break down companies and how they perform and stuff, but they broke down if you hypothetically put a certain amount of money in, into a money market account, this is how it would perform over the next 20 years. And somehow between then and when I graduated and started working, that left my mind and I started to get the idea that, well, if you're gonna invest and make a good amount of money from it and be able to live off of it and, and all that stuff and, and be rich, basically, you have to have a substantial amount of money to invest. And if not, it's gonna take a really long time and I, I was wanting to accumulate wealth right then. I wanted to make 10K, 11K a month off of my investments right then. That's the one thing about my younger self is I was not specialized in being as patient as I am now and understanding the process and what it takes to really build wealth over the long term. And it could, the long term could be five to 10 years, 15 years from now. It doesn't have to be 40 daggone years, but that's just the mindset that I had. In retrospect, looking back, what I'm investing now, it didn't take that much money to essentially double my net worth. It didn't take that much money or that much time. It's only been like five years. And as I learned this over the years and as I continued to grow over the years and just sharpen my skills, I started to learn even more about investing outside of my 401k. Got a Roth IRA, got an individual investing account where I just invest in individual stocks. It's good to know that you have money spread across everywhere. Like you have a savings, you have a savings part two, right? Like an emergency fund, but you also have investments spread across a multitude of areas and they're all performing pretty solid. And it's a good feeling when you look at your investment portfolio and you're like, man, I made more money today then my job pays me for a full day of work. It's a good feeling. And it's really cool if you have a job and a business and the investment pays you more than both of those combined. And that's with a high paying job. And that's with a pretty decent business model. Like it's just a really good feeling. So it makes sleeping at night a lot easier. It makes your financial security a lot more prevalent and like in your face like, yeah, like, I'm doing good right now. So I wish I just would have known that earlier, like you can invest and save at the same time and you can make saving the bigger priority because you wanna obviously build a net where you have money that you can pull from instantly when you need it, but you need another pool of money where you, you don't need, you don't need to touch it at all and it just grows. And then you're gonna feel even more financially secure. And yes, investments do have risk. Yes, they do go up and down. But if you don't sell it, when it goes down, you're not going to lose any money. And that's something else I wish I would have known. But I can make a, a totally separate video about that. And here's another thing that I had to drop to really understand how to build wealth and double my money. Because I used to really believe that Debt is the number one priority, no matter what type of debt it is. It didn't matter if it was student loans, didn't matter if it was credit card debt, it didn't matter what kind of debt it was. It was the number one priority over saving, over investing, over everything. And that simply is not true, and that's not how I think money should be viewed. Now, if it's credit card debt only, that interest rate can eat you alive. You don't want that in your life. Get rid of it by all means. But you still, in my opinion, I think you need to have a savings because my biggest fear has always been, what if I pay down all my debt and I have like little to nothing in savings and then like COVID happens again, right? Or I lose my job. Like, you know what I mean? Like what would happen? Like how upset would you be knowing that you could have just viewed your money in a different way? Like, no. There's pathways with my money. This is a new concept that I've been thinking of for a while. I'm gonna share it in this video. There's different pathways of money. A lot of us feel like we don't have the money to spend on certain things, like we can't afford certain things. But if you just view money as ways you can split it into different pathways, this amount goes towards debt. This amount goes towards savings. We can really start to evolve how we use our money and how smart we become with our money. Because the way I used to do it when I got paid and I got overtime, 
first of all, I treated the overtime like it didn't exist, like it was just extra money that I didn't see. But then once it was time to start paying back student loans, I was like, okay, I'm going to live off of my normal paycheck like a smart person. That's a smart thing to do. Never base your bills off of your overtime. But then I was like, you know what? With all of my overtime, I'm just going to straight up throw it, boom, right into my student loans. And yes, that is a very fast way to knock down your student loans or even get rid of your student loans. But if I were smarter with money back then, I would have leveraged some of that overtime and put it a good chunk of it toward my savings and then another decent chunk toward my student loans. Like it wasn't no rush. It wasn't like a weight on my shoulders. The interest rate was not eating me alive because it was only like an average of, I think, like 4%. And I wasn't going to win like a golden medal for <laughs> for paying off my student loans super early just to say that I did it. Like it would have made more sense to build a solid nest egg where I felt more comfortable while also knocking my debt down little by little and still having more of it paid off than my peers who say didn't have the opportunity of overtime. So like... I still would have been better off than the average person just doing it that way, but I would have been able to sleep a lot better at night and I would have felt a lot more secure within myself and within my finances. So that's just how I feel about it looking back at it right now. Now, this one is probably my favorite belief that I dropped that may not seem financial, but I promise you it is. Uh, I had to drop the idea that people actually care about you because they don't. Let me explain this to you and make this very real life to you. In general, people don't care about your feelings. People don't care about what you have going on in your life. They don't care about your relationship issues. They don't care about your financial issues. They don't care about your at-home issues. They don't care about any of that stuff. They don't care about what's going on in your mind or what internal battles that you're fighting right now. They don't care about the fact that the last thing you wanted to do was wake up this morning go to work, be mistreated, spend a bunch of hours. They don't care about any hardship or any challenge that you have going on in your life. They don't care about your goals. They don't care about your dreams. They don't care about what makes you happy. Everybody is so preoccupied with where they're at in life. They're so focused on their problems that people in general do not care about you. Why do I say that? Because it's easy to get into a mindset that, well, People have sympathy for me. People have empathy for me. People care, so they're going to have some sort of leniency in life. And that is just not the case. You have to have a, a mentality of a bull. Like, you're going to push through whatever is going on in life because you better because no one else is going to see you and be like, oh, I feel so sorry for them. Let me throw $1,000 their way. They're behind on rent. Let me. They ain't going to pay your bills. No one's going to understand if you can't pay your bills. You're going to get booted out acting like that. You can't have the mentality that someone's going to save you because in general, people just don't give a crap. I mean, when I was in my first job, I was like, man, like, cause like I was going through a lot of stuff at the time, mentally, physically. Um, I wasn't eating that much cause I was stressed out all the time. I was always working. I was so focused on doing the work and I was kind of hiding behind the pain that I was having, like outside of work. And people think that they can just go in and be like, well, I'm going through a breakup, so my manager's going to understand if I'm not performing as high as I normally do. Well, no, they're not. Ain't nobody going to be understanding of that. And why should they? Should things stop performing at the optimal level just because you're going through something right now? Like, I can understand if it's like a death in the family, you take some time off, stuff like that, right? But every time you come back, the expectation is still going to be the same. That's the harsh truth that nobody tells you in school. Nobody tells you that nobody gives a crap if you're going through a breakup or if you're going through financial hardship. You still are expected to do the best. And as an adult, I'll just give you this hardcore piece of advice that is basically a hidden gem that no one really talks about. Regardless of how you feel in life, you have to always perform. You have to always push the envelope just a little bit further. You always have to push yourself more. The worse you feel, the harder you should push yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to feel bad and you're going to have stress in the back of your mind because you know there's something that is in your control that you could have taken care of, but you chose not to purely because you're feeling bad or emotional or whatever the case is. It's not like you're sick or unable to do the things that you'd normally be able to do. You just have some things on your mind and you have to let yourself know you have to keep going. You have to keep pushing. And that mindset has taken me 
leaps and bounds ahead of where I initially was. And I truly believe that led to me doubling my money because if I had the mindset of, well, I'm just going to lay down because I feel sad today or I feel stressed out today, like I wouldn't be where I am today. I probably wouldn't have created this YouTube channel. I wouldn't have gotten promoted at work. I wouldn't have gotten several raises at work. I wouldn't have been able to serve to people as, as a mentor and as a coach. There's so many things I wouldn't have been able to do had I had the mentality of, well, people care about me so much that I just <laughs> don't have to fulfill any of my obligations as an adult. Like, no, you still have to keep going, especially as you progress throughout life, you get married, you have kids. Now you owe it even more to the people that you care about and they care about you, but they're not going to put up with you being in a, in a stump for such a long amount of time and now you're not providing for them. And that's just how I view the world as a man based off of my life experience and based off of the things and beliefs that I've had to drop to get myself to another level because you're going to have these self-limiting beliefs. Even if you feel like these beliefs are something that's going to forge you and help you, sometimes these are enabling beliefs, which is just another form of self-limiting beliefs because you limit yourself by believing that you can relax a little bit and take a step back just because you're not feeling up to par today because of an emotional thing that's going on or whatever the case is. And I'm not saying not to take mental health seriously. I'm saying take it so seriously that you seek the help that you need and you keep pressing forward without, of course, burning yourself out. There's a fine balance between that. Just remember, you have to keep going. And if you're going through something extreme, you need to seek specific type of health like perhaps therapy and from there you recover you get what you need and you keep pressing forward that way i'm not saying to go through the worst experience you've ever had in your life and just always press forward and like you're weak if you know what i'm saying you're, you're weak if you don't do that I'm, I'm not saying that at all but anyway those are the things that i had to drop to double my money as far as beliefs go and, and money goes because it doesn't have to be like that you don't have to keep and hold on to the beliefs that you've had since you were a kid. You are allowed to grow from those beliefs and see things around you that are contrary to those beliefs and then instill new beliefs within your life and then act on them in that way. Just as I've done, just as many people before me have as well. So I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.